He was on the verge of making it big in the music business, and he seemed to have it all. To everyone else, the rapper known as G. Depp had a bright future. But he was haunted by his past, hiding a terrible secret his conscience just wouldn't let him forget. So he made an incredible decision to take justice into his own hands. Here's ABC's Deborah Roberts for our series, Crime and Punishment. Pardon me, I'm just trying to get by until I die. This is a tale of music, murder, and redemption. If you had it to do over again, knowing that you would go to jail for a long time, would you still confess? I would do it again. I would, you know what I mean? Because it was, I don't think there was no other way around it except me, me dying. His name is g Depp, short for Ghetto Dependent. Sean Combs even teamed up with him in his music video, Let's Get It. He led a gangster life and glorified it in rhyme. And he paid a great debt for committing a crime, betrayed by the last person anyone would have suspected, himself. I was the only way I could have been absolved, you know, a person of sacrifice. How he got there is a story in itself. G. Depp, born Travell Coleman, dropped out of college at 18 in search of a music career. He paid for recording sessions by selling cocaine on the streets of Harlem, New York. He dabbled in drugs. In the fall of 1993, a month before his 19th birthday, he mugged a stranger with a gun. We were standing under the scaffold on Park Avenue, 114th Street. I was riding my bike. I said, well, oh, give me the money, man. The guy grabbed the gun, you know, and I pulled the gun back, and that's when I fired. How many times did you fire? Three times. He fled on his bike. As he left home the next morning, police were canvassing the neighborhood. They said, do you know anything about a shooting that occurred yesterday? And I said, nah, that made me think he didn't pass away because they said shooting. A week later, he got rid of the gun. And I went to the East River and threw it away. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Full swing, full swing like rock and roll. Coleman stayed quiet about the Harlem shooting, throwing himself into his music. Then, five years later, he caught the eye of Sean Combs. How much were they going to pay you? Well, uh, the record deal was for uh, three, 350000 You know, it was definitely, you know, more money than I had that seen. He had a daughter with a girlfriend. That relationship ended. Then he met Crystal Sutton at a club. They married in 2004 and had twin boys, now nine. He has such a great heart. He's always so giving, so caring. He had fame, fortune, and now a family. And the stain on his past. How much did it eat at you? It seemed like it just wasn't fair for me to, you know, be happy. You know what I'm saying? So I used to curb my happiness. You know, like just, now wait a minute, I'm, I'm smiling too much, I'm laughing too much. He remained haunted by his secret, that shooting in Harlem. Whatever happened to that man? Was he dead? I thought about whether or not he had children. He could have been a father, and hey, I am trying to be a father. Did anybody know that you were hiding from this demon, this thing in your past? I felt like I couldn't really tell anybody because uh, I didn't want them to be involved. Burdened by an unbearable secret, g Depp's music career suffered. Sean Combs dropped him from his bad boy label. Probably wasn't drugs. I was just knee deep in trying to, you know, medicate myself. Everything was boiling down. The guilt. To that, yeah. In late 2010, Coleman couldn't bear it anymore. He confessed to a police officer he'd shot a man 17 years before. The police did nothing. Maybe he thought that you were just uh, faking this. Yeah. Incredibly, Coleman later went back to police to confess again. What led you to walk into that police station? I think I was just at a point, you know, where it was like enough is enough. But nobody else knew about it? You could have just kept quiet and dealt with it on your own. The dealing with it was killing me. Coleman's memory of the incident was vague. I didn't realize it was hitting him or anything. I just, because I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything, on, you know, I, I just fired him. But police soon found the cold case of John Hankel, shot during October of 1993 at Park Avenue and 114th Street. And then after a while, you know, after I told him what happened, you know, he said, I just wanted to let you know that the guy died. Suddenly, you're charged in a murder. Did you start to have second thoughts? Nah.
Travell Coleman had charged himself with murder. You have to concede that that man probably lived in a jail in his head for, for 18 years. Editor-in-chief of GQ magazine, Jim Nelson, was the jury foreman. The hard parts about this case is that it involves a guy who didn't really need to come forward, who did. I mean, he needed to come forward for his conscience. But, you know, we were wrestling with this as jurors because this man's already gone through hell. And he's done something noble. But he did kill someone. I completely understand that for the people who knew John Henkel, it's a different story. The jury found Coleman guilty of second-degree murder. On May 8, 2012, he was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. The case of Travell Coleman has haunted me. One of your twin sons said shortly after you confessed and were arrested that he said he was going to take money from someone. And he said, if I steal, then I can go to jail and then I can be with Daddy. It must have broken your heart. Yeah. So they understand that Dad chose yeah. to turn himself in. And they're proud of him. I have one really, like, tough one. <laughs> and then one that, yeah, he'll, he'll cry. Coleman had separated from his wife in 2008, but Crystal says she's standing by him. He said to me that in some ways he feels freer now, even though he is locked up. It is a different Travel. It's a different Travel to me, not on drugs. I mean, he feels freer, and that, that you can tell when talking to him. Do you think he made the right decision? And whatever decision Travell chooses to make, and I have to stand by him. There are relatives of this victim who can't believe that you confessed. Some of them even say he's an idiot. He should have shut up about it. Now we're dredging this whole thing up again all these years later. A lot of the burden is lifted. You know, I see that that was what I needed to do. In prison, g Depp is still rapping. The only thing I really want to talk about is walking out, only because everybody else talk about it. I tell them realistically, I doubt it. Fifteen years is a long time, but I gotta be strong. I did a crime. I said the system's insanity. I hope God forgives my calamity. I feel for the victim's family. For Nightline, I'm Deborah Roberts in New York.